That was a beautiful message.
is programmed into us because of sin. For example, if you hit me, what is programmed into me to do? Hit you back, right? If a beautiful woman walks down in the beach in, in a bikini, what is programmed in men's minds to do? It's just hardwired into our nature to do certain things. It's part of our code. The Bible calls it a law. Another word for a law is a code. Another word for a code are rules. Another word for rules are calculations. So if, you, if I take my phone and I open the calculator and I put 2 plus 2, what is the calculator? calculator going to say? Why does it say four? No, like, Pat It's a new day. Know. Time Warner Cable is now okay. Spectrum. So With TV, internet, and voice, you get it all. Enjoy the fastest starting speeds. 100 megabits per second. With no four. contracts, just $29.99 a month. Welcome to a new day. Welcome to Spectrum. That? Because it's programmed to say that. It's in the system so that every time you put two plus two, the answer is going to be four. It's programmed into the language, the system that drives the phone, or the system that drives the calculator, or the system that drives the computer. It's the code, it's the law, it's the language. Inside of us is our sinful nature, and at the seat of that sinful idolatry. It's self. We are our own selfish idol. So naturally, without God working to override my code, I'm going to make every selfish decision. Right? If, uh, if we were all starving right now, let's say we're all a pack of dogs, and we're all starving, and we put one bowl of food down here, what are we going to do? Well, 
trying to drop those lines of code or laws and rules onto somebody's computer so that it will override the codes on their computer. It makes sense, doesn't it? So God is like the best computer hacker ever because he wants to hack into our system and overwrite our sinful codes so that once we love to do something, now we hate it. Once we didn't like to do something, now we love it. That's what God wants to do. We can't change our operating system ourselves. Only God can do it. It's like this. Last week, my dad had to go. He has had a pacemaker for seven years. A pacemaker only technically lasts for five years, they say. But my dad's had his for seven years. So he went in to have a test. They tested the pacemaker, and the pacemaker wasn't working. And my dad's heart only works at 30%. the God will accept you. But our God, just like the song, beautiful song, our God runs to us and says, I can fix you. I can override your sinful nature. And when Jesus comes, he's actually going to take that sinful nature out of us. But until then, just like if your computer gets a virus, they can write code that puts that virus in a vault, locks it in a vault on your computer so that it can't run. It's like in jail. It's in code jail. And God can do the same thing with our sinful nature. He can, he can control the codes that drive us to do sin. He can cause them not to function so that we can do righteousness instead, so that we can do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. It says in the Bible in Romans 6, Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so you, so we too may walk in a new way of life. So how was Christ raised from the dead? What does it say in that verse? How was he raised from the dead? By the glory of the Father. So how do we walk in a new way? By the glory of the Father. It's not something we can do on our own. That's why we need Jesus every single day. Because he can give us the power by his glory and him overriding that code that we can walk in a new way. I hear a lot of people lamenting and beating themselves up because of their failure. It's what we do. And we beat ourselves up because we failed, we, we sinned here, we sinned there, we did this, we did that. 
And then we say, I won't do that anymore. Right? But that action that we did is coming from our faulty system. And we are going to do it again. And we're going to do it again and again and again unless we let God come in and change the very core of our being. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to change us from the inside. You know that saying, like, uh, they'll know we're Christians by our love, love one another. Does that mean that we really love each other, or we come to church and just fake love each other? Or does it mean we truly love each other? See, we have a lot of, you know, we go through certain actions, and we look like we're, we're controlling our operating system, but it's kind of fake control. It's not really. Like, I'm not going to do certain things right here while I'm standing in front of you, but what do I do when I'm alone? What do I do when I'm home? You know, I can come and say, Happy Sabbath, have a wonderful day. And then how do I treat my family at home? See, God wants to change us at the core so that we do what we do because he's in control of our system instead of our sinful nature being in control of our system. And it doesn't happen because we're so strong or we're so good. It happens by the glory of the Father. It's God working in us to will and to do his good pleasure. In Romans 6, verse 10 to 14, it lists several things there. And I just want to read you this, these verses. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you want your old, rock, your old operating system to be dead and under control? Do you want God to override your system? Where I work, I go into somebody's office. They will have reached out to me. My computer doesn't work. I need your help, Angie. I go in the office, and they're sitting at their desk. They're sitting at their desk like this. And I walk into their office, and they're sitting with their computer right here. And I walk in. Guess what they do? They get up from their desk. They say, here, it's all yours. I have no clue. Right? That's what they do. And just like my daughter took her phone to Verizon, she threw it on the counter. I have no idea what's happening. And we don't even understand why we do what we do. But I can tell you this. It's coming from our faulty operating system. And all God wants us to do is say, here, I have no idea. Override my system. Right? And he's going to run to do that. Right? He wants to do it. He's going to run when we give him the permission to do that. So... In Romans, it says, reckon yourself to be dead to God, to sin, but alive to God. So every time I sin and fail, what should I do? What made me do that? My sinful operating system. My, my code is faulty. So reckon yourself dead to sin, but what? Alive to God. So every time, turn right around and go to God. Because God's the only one that can fix you. And then it says, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its lust. Don't let your faulty operating system reign. Let God's system reign instead. Right? So live in God's direction. Live by God's connection. So we're connected to God so that his system can override our system. What happens the moment you disconnect from God? What system is going to rule? Yeah, our, our own faulty system is going to rule. Bob told this story several times, I'm sure you've heard of it, of two dogs that were going to fight. You feed the one dog and you starve the other dog, which dog's going to win? The one that you feed, right? So if you want the system of God to win in your life, this is the food for it right here. The word of God is the food for that system. And staying connected to God so that God can override our system. 
So I feel a temptation coming on, like a spell, you know, like a dizzy spell. I feel a temptation coming on. What do I do? I run in God's direction and I ask him to please override this system so that I won't even want to do that thing anymore. I won't even like to do that thing anymore. And then God gives us a mission so that we can be instruments of righteousness, it says there in verse 13, instruments of righteousness to help other people have their system overridden. And God wants to make that happen. So he wants people to see that we're letting God rule in us so that they will want God to rule in them. So, you know, how is it that you can keep your cool under so much pressure? Why don't you, like, why don't you have road rage when there's so much traffic? You know, what is it that can override those natural tendencies that we have? It's only the glory of the Father that can do it. And God wants to do it, and he wants us to live in his power. I have no power or knowledge or expertise to override my faulty system. But there is a God in heaven who can do it and wants to do it and wants to help me. And he does it by his grace. It says in Revelation 6.14, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. So by God's grace, he can override these rules and code that's in our system. It even says that the, the law of God, which we think of as ten sentences on a table of stone. Is that how you think of the law of God? Ten sentences on a table of stone? It's really not ten sentences on a table of stone. It's a code. It's a system. It's an operating language. Look what it says in Hebrews. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing of soul and spirit, or even to divide bone and marrow. What is marrow? What happens in your bone marrow? So, really, can you live without bone marrow? Bone marrow is where you have your DNA and everything comes out of your bone marrow. So even the God's operating system, his word can go with the very depth of who we are. So do you have some genetic weaknesses? I'll tell you what, I have genetic weaknesses. I, I would say probably, I don't know, 80% of my genetic line were alcoholics. It's a genetic weakness. And I'm sure if we looked at your family line, there are genetic weaknesses in your family line. We, ha we all have them. We have, we have inherited tendencies to do certain things. It's part of our code. Visiting the sins of the fathers unto the what? How many generations? We have these weaknesses and these tendencies that we can't change and we can't do anything about it. But praise God, miracle of miracles, God can override our system. He can even override our DNA code. He can override our life commandments that we've gotten from our family. He can override those and help us by his word. It says, reckon yourself to be dead to sin, but alive to God. Those two systems are working. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign by, life of, by the life of one, Jesus Christ. Those two systems. One is a system of sin. One is a system of righteousness that we can only get by one person. Who's that one person? Jesus Christ, he's the only one who can help us with our sin problem. So every single day, God is trying to hack into your system. He's trying to hack into the codes that run you. You're like a computer. At night, your battery's recharging through sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, it's a brand new day. 
but your codes are faulty. And Jesus just wants permission to rewrite your codes for that day. And it's a day-by-day thing. So it's like, if it's, you turn your computer on, and it's like Jesus saying, hey, this is Jesus. Will you trust me to override your system? And when you wake up in the morning, there's Jesus. He's run to you first thing in the morning when you open your eyes. He's there every single minute of the day. And the last thing before you go to bed, there's Jesus. And he's saying, will you let me override your system? Can I write new codes? It says, I will write my laws in your heart so that you'll love them and you'll obey them. That's God overwriting the code of sin in our life. How many of you would like God to override your codes? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much. It's so awesome of you that you want to come and override the codes that make us do what we do. That you can work in us to will and to do your good pleasure, Lord. We want to give you permission to do that right now. We pray that you will do that. We pray that you'll deal with our sinful nature, put it in quarantine, put it in time out so that it can't operate and cause us to do things that really in our heart we don't want to do. And help us, Lord, by the codes that you write in us to do what you want us to do. Thank you so much for this miracle that you work in our life. In Jesus' name, amen.